Tommy Lahren did one of her final thought segments on Fox News, and uh, she put on a clinic in shitty arguments and straw manning opponents. Like it or not, President Trump has done some outstanding things for the people of this country. Let me help you and your delusional band of impeachment hungry fools understand. Let's start with the economy. Trump pushed through a tax cut for 80% of American taxpayers. And what do the Democrats want to do? Raise taxes. American paychecks are getting bigger under Trump, and they want to fix that. Seriously? The economy has also added more than 2 million new jobs. The black unemployment rate is at just 6.9%, the second lowest ever recorded. Oh, and the Hispanic unemployment rate was at just 4.9% last month, just a tenth of a percentage above a historic low. And here's the thing about new jobs, low unemployment, and economic growth. They help all Americans, black, white, brown, left, right, and center. Is that the kind of accomplishment you want to impeach? President Trump is also dedicated to protecting our homeland. The number of people caught trying to sneak across the Mexican border has plunged to a 46-year low. And the percentage of illegal immigrants arrested for criminal activity across the country is up to 92%. And how about ISIS? Remember them? Well, under this commander-in-chief, they've been decimated and control little territory in the Middle East. And despite the hysteria over President Trump's tweets and his, quote, tone, North Korean rocket man Kim Jong-un has decided to come to the table. Is it historic? Yes. Is it impeachable? No. Trump's done all this and more with virtually no help from Democrats. And you want to impeach him? For what? Keeping his promises? Your little activist groups are shelling out millions to stop a president who is winning, and you can't even give us one solid and honest reason why. Have you instead thought of donating your millions to causes you say you believe in, instead of wasting it on a campaign to destroy a president you're simply jealous of? It's very obvious you're not afraid Trump is a bad president. You're afraid because he's too good. I don't know why anybody would do that. Like, why... She's arguing the way she's arguing, arguing, she's making the arguments that she's making, because it's not, like, they're so bad that anybody who spends, a, like, a little bit of effort can just debunk and swat away each and every point that she made. So I don't know why, it's almost like, because there's a lack of substance, she turns up the volume. <laughs> It's the old O'Reilly trick, like, I really don't have anything important or correct to say, so I'm gonna be loud! Okay, but that doesn't change the fact that you're making really bad points. So, uh, let's go through this. Now, we'll start with the biggest claim. The, uh, the real reason people don't like Trump is he's too good as president. So they're jealous. They're jealous. Classic, classic straw man. You're telling your opponents what you think they believe, as opposed to just listening to them when they tell you what they believe, and then responding to their point in an honest way. What you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to tell you what you believe, and then I'm going to slap down that thing that I just pretended that you believe, even though you don't believe it. He's... You say he's too good at being president, or he's... He makes... Democrats jealous because he's so good at being president. I... Come on, man. Really? We have to... I have to take time to argue against that. I mean, listen, just for starters, just for starters, half of workers in America make $30,000 a year or less. Okay? Now, I, I went after Obama because wages were shitty under him too, but they're also shitty under Trump. So I'm, I'm open and I'm honest about the flaws on the Democratic side because I have no stake in this game. I have no horse in this race or dog in this fight. I'm just calling balls and strikes and telling you like it is. So I think that's a problem. I think it's a problem we're currently bombing eight different countries, Tommy. Now, under the Constitution, the president has to get a declaration of war when we start a war from Congress. They haven't done that. Are you okay with that? You're okay with, let's just bomb eight different countries. And by the way, Niger is one of those countries. Just point the direct threat from Niger against the U.S. homeland. Tell me, uh, you know, where's the evidence that they're about to attack North Dakota? There's no evidence that Niger or Yemen or any of these countries that we're bombing are going to attack us, so we're just needlessly bombing all over the place. Donald Trump increased uh, military spending $60 billion. I have a little bit of a problem with that, especially because we spend more than the next nine or ten biggest countries combined already on military. 
So look, I'm just pointing out some basic things that I have a problem with. And it's not just me, it's many people on the left. And this is why we don't like President Trump. I don't like President Trump because he littered his administration full of Goldman Sachs lackeys. Uh, thankfully, he lost one of them recently, Gary Cohn, but he replaced him with Larry Kudlow, who's just as bad, if not worse. Um, but he's doing Wall Street's bidding. I covered a story about how he colluded with the predatory payday loan industry to charge, uh, so that they can charge 950% interest. They scrapped the rules that were going to go in place to clean up that industry. I have a problem with that, Tommy. So don't tell me that my problem with Donald Trump is that he's too good at being president or you're jealous at him, over him. Get the fuck it! No! Listen to what we say to you. And by the way, this isn't just me. Now, I'm giving you, of course, really good reasons to despise Trump. There are people who have shitty reasons to not like him. And I talk about that all the time, whether there's people talking about Stormy Daniels, you know, I can't stand that, or just the chaos in his administration. Oh my god, there's been a lot of turnover in his administration. Come on, give me something better than that nonsense, because we all know if it was a Democrat with high turnover, Democrats would be like, who cares? Or if it was a Democrat who had an affair, Democrats would be like, who cares? Monica Lewinsky. There you go. But listen, there are reasons to despise him. And we all know, by the way, that would Tommy Lahren not care about it if there was a, a, an affair where a Democrat had an affair with a porn star? Would she shut up about it and say, listen, per personal lives are none of my business? No, she would be like, this is wrong and terrible, and oh my god, maybe we should impeach him over that. So, she's a hack, everybody knows she's a hack, and her arguments are so bad, but really, too jealous. It, the Democrats are jealous about Trump, and he's too good at being president. Yeah, that's the problem, Tommy. That's the argument, uh, you know, the Democrats really believe is, shit, he's so good at being president, I don't know how we're supposed to respond. Jesus. Okay. Um, then she says, she says at one point, oh, you can't, I'm working backwards, by the way, in her claims. Oh, you can't give an honest reason for impeachment. Actually, listen, I personally, I don't favor impeachment. Because you're going to get Mike Pence anyway. Mike Pence is just as bad as Trump, if not worse. In the process of impeachment, you spend a tremendous amount of political capital that's distracting from things you should be talking about if you're the Democrats, like Medicare for All and free college and a living wage and stuff like that. Um, so you waste political capital, you get Mike Pence anyway, and also you rile up Trump's base and make it much more likely that Republicans come out uh, big time in the next election. So there's really a lot of reasons why impeachment is not a good idea. So I don't personally favor impeachment. But the idea that there is not an honest reason for impeachment is bullshit. So for example, the Emoluments Clause. The Emoluments Clause of the Constitution says the president can't be taking money from foreign governments. Donald Trump has a worldwide empire with his business. He unquestionably has taken money from foreign governments. In fact, it's not even controversial. There's been reporting on it. So, for example, he took $270,000 from top Saudi officials at his hotel. And then, wow, look at that. Lo and behold, he gave them a hundred, over a $100 billion weapons deal. Uh, but it's not just them. It's the Saudi government, the Turkish government. Um, he has business all around the world. In fact, in 12 different countries, he has businesses. So, this idea that there's not an honest reason for impeachment. Okay, I just gave you one, the Emoluments Clause. Now, you could agree or disagree with that, Tommy, and say, oh, I don't think it's, it really meets that bar, but it's an honest reason where somebody could have a, a disagreement with you and say, no, this is a legitimate reason to impeach. Um, and then there's other reasons, too. Like, the fact that his first military raid as president killed an eight-year-old American girl. I mean, that, again, you, don't, you could say, I don't think you should impeach over that, but that's an honest reason for impeachment assassinating an American without due process in any way. Just assassinating an American with a drone. Of course you could impeach over that. And by the way, it's an eight-year-old girl! It's an eight-year-old girl nonetheless. So this idea of there's no reason for impeachment... Get the fuck out of here! Of course there are. There are honest reasons for impeachment. I don't happen to favor impeachment because of the reasons I described, but there are honest reasons for impeachment. Now, I admit, most of the Democratic rhetoric is stupid. It's over Russia when it comes to impeachment. I don't even know what the fuck they're babbling about when they say that. But, any Democrats who say emoluments, that's an honest reason for impeachment. Um, okay. Then, she gives uh, Trump credit for ha the fact that he's gonna have a meeting with Kim Jong-un. And imp implies, like, she was like, getting Kim Jong-un to the table? Democrats haven't done that. If Barack Obama did sit down with Kim Jong-un, she would have been the first person to say that he shouldn't be doing that. Oh my god! 
You're treating these dictators as equals. You're doing appeasement. You're doing an apology tour for America. And how do I know that this would have been the reaction from people like Tommy Lahren? It was the reaction when Obama said he would meet with Iran without preconditions. He's like, yeah, I'll meet with Iran, no conditions. And people were like, oh, how dare you? You're not saying release fucking uh, political prisoners they have as a condition for how? I can't believe you do that. Terrible. Appeasement. They sit down with our enemies weak. You're supposed to stand up to our enemies and be tough and say, I'm not going to talk to you. Well, Donald Trump says, I'm going to talk to North Korean leader. Immediately, Tommy Lauren's like, wonderful, amazing. If Obama did the same thing, she would have said, terrible. So again, partisan hack, clown. Um, and just to be clear, guys, I, on the other hand, I'm not a hypocrite on this. I told you, I don't think the meeting with Kim Jong-un is going to work, but I still think it's a good idea to do the meeting. Because the alternative is Trump and his band of neocon warhawk idiots. They do a conflict and they start bombing shit. So I'd rather him talk to them. So it's just she'll twist anything to be a good argument for Trump and Republicans. To be a reason to support Trump and Republicans. Then she talks about ISIS being decimated. This one is hilarious. Now, first of all, the reason why ISIS is dwindling at the moment has nothing to do with the U.S. And it has everything to do with the Syrian government, who've been on the ground fighting them nonstop, the Kurds, who've been on the ground fighting them nonstop, the various militias in the region, including the Shia militias that are fighting them nonstop. So, the real hard-fought battles won on the ground by the people in the region, which, by the way, is what we've been saying should be the case all along, that the U.S. should stay out, stop wasting our money, our resources, our lives, and stop killing civilians, and let people in the region take care of it. And that's what happens. People in the region take care of ISIS. And immediately, Donald Trump and the Republicans take credit. Oh, it's me. I've done it. It's so strong. Now, think about this. As they're taking credit for destroying jihadists, Donald Trump just did over a $100 billion weapons deal with, Yemen, with uh, Saudi Arabia. And he did that as Saudi Arabia is doing a genocide in Yemen. They're blockading the country, not allowing in medicine. People are having cholera and dying. Um, millions of people are starving because they're blocking food from coming in the country along with medicine. They're bombing hospitals, mosques, schools. And here's the most important point. There's been, it's been, uh, it's been documented that Saudi Arabia, they get these weapons, and you know what, you know what they do with those weapons oftentimes? They send them to Syrian rebels, and they send weapons to militias, Sunni militias on the ground fighting the Shia Houthi rebels in Yemen. And guess what? They're jihadists. In Syria, many of the rebels are jihadists. In Yemen, the Sunni militias on the ground are jihadists. It's Al-Qaeda in many instances. So we are arming Saudi Arabia. They are arming Al-Qaeda. In other words, jihadists, Al-Qaeda, are getting U.S.-made weapons as we are arming Al-Qaeda. Tommy Lahren has the nerve to say, Trump defeating jihadists. Are you kidding me? There's an easy way to defeat them. Uh, they'd be- they'd fold within a year completely if we stopped arming Saudi Arabia and all these questionable actors throughout the Middle East. So she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. And then she talks about immigration- there's an immigration drop under Trump. Actually, immigration was also net zero under Obama, and you guys just pretended it wasn't. You guys just acted like, no. No, immigration is not net zero under Obama. No, there's a porous border. People are pouring through. Bullshit. Immigration was net zero for Mexico. So, they... Again, it's twisting facts. It's replacing what should be solid arguments with just anger. And listen, I'm not against yelling, obviously. I yell all the fucking time on this show. But you have to have substance behind what you're saying. She doesn't. Um, then she talks about this, one of my favorite arguments. Black unemployment rate. Oh, black unemployment rate. There's new jobs, new jobs being created. Well, first of all, there were new jobs being created under Obama all the time. In fact, he had over 10 million jobs, over 12 million jobs created under his administration. Now, did Republicans give Obama credit for that, the private sector job growth? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Now, according to their own ideology, they should, because they love the private sector, so private sector job growth is fucking awesome. But, here's why I didn't give Obama much credit for those jobs created. Why? Because they were low-wage jobs. Higher-paying jobs were replaced with low-wage jobs. Under Trump, what's going on? Low-wage job creation. So I'm not going to give him a bunch of credit for those two million jobs created. I'm not going to give him a bunch of credit for the lowest black unemployment rate or anything like that. Because they're shitty jobs. 
How stupid is that? Oh, we'll give you a job that's not even a living wage in many instances. And now fucking praise me like I'm wonderful. What? No, how about you pay people a fucking living wage? How about that? So that's the part they'll never tell you. Uh, under Obama's administration, they may have made that point as a counterpoint when somebody says, hey, Obama did a lot of job creation. Then the Republicans may have said, yeah, but they're low wage, so it's not as that's not a, a damning statistic against us. But whenever they're in power, now, now all of a sudden, oh, don't look at the fact that it's low wage job creation, just say it's job creation. It's job creation, so it's good, fucking stupid Democrats. Um, and then finally, and this really is the crux of how misleading uh, her shitty arguments are. She says about Trump's tax bill, it uh, cuts taxes for 80% of Americans. And the Democrats, um, you know, they want to raise taxes. Well, first of all, no. You're wrong on both of those things, okay? So, first of all, over a 10-year period, Donald Trump's tax bill raises taxes on everybody that makes $75,000 a year or less. That's not me speaking. That's the CBO speaking. That's every nonpartisan analysis speaking. That's the economist speaking. So it raises taxes on the middle class and the poor over a 10-year period, okay? Second of all, 83% of the benefits go to the top 1%. 83% of the benefits. So Paul Ryan did this the other day on Twitter. He was like, uh, somebody came up to me and said, I can afford, uh, you know, I can get lunch with the tax break you gave me. And he had to delete the tweet. Why? Because people were like, that is a fucking embarrassing point. As the Koch brothers literally are reaping billions of dollars of rewards from this tax bill. Billions! You're rubbing in people's faces that somebody could afford a lunch. And that's just in the short run. Like I said, in the long run, they net raise taxes on everybody making $75,000 a year or less. So, that is such a, a bullshit, misleading argument. It doesn't take into account um, the fact that over a 10-year period, all the tax cuts for the middle class have a sunset provision on it, which means they run out. You know what doesn't run out? All the tax cuts for the rich are permanent. They're permanent. Corporate taxes went from 35% to 21%. By the way... That's at a time when corporations are already paying a historic low percentage of the tax burden. In the 1950s, corporations paid 33% of the federal tax burden. 33%. Uh, then by 2012, 2013, they were paying about 9%. So who do you think is going to pick up the slack? You're going to pick up the slack. And the Republicans just handed over a tremendous amount of money to the rich. They gutted the estate tax, cut taxes for corporations and the rich. Gave you a little fucking tiny little bit, and then they're going to take that away. So, it's just totally misleading to say 80% of Americans get a tax cut under Donald Trump. And then the idea that the Democrats want to raise taxes, bullshit. Bullshit. Obama made 90% of the Bush tax cuts permanent. Now, many Democrats didn't like that. But those 90% that he made permanent were mostly on low-income people. So this idea of like, ah, the Democrats want to raise tax on regular people. That's nonsense. That's the only argument the Republicans have leaned on to try to make the case that they're for the middle class, even though they're not for the middle class. So, uh, but again, this is the kind of nonsense that you get. Uh, these are all misleading arguments, bullshit arguments, flat out factually incorrect arguments. There's lies by commission, lies by omission. And for the lack of substance, she makes up for it by increasing the volume and talking down to you. So, you know, it, listen, everybody needs to understand what this is. She's a rank propagandist. Now, you, again, if you're unfamiliar with my show, you might say, well, how do I know you're not a rank propagandist for the other side? My track record speaks for itself, man. I've done multiple segments already this show shitting on the Democrats for being terrible. I'm not playing rah-rah for a team. I'm not team Democrat. I'm not team Republican. I'm team facts and information and I'm team uh, help the American people now you don't have to believe that but fine then you're wrong if you don't believe that <laughs> my, like I said my record speaks for itself I shit on the Democrats all the time I shit on the Republicans all the time because my job is to tell you the truth uh, so when you look at Tommy Lahren and her bullshit cheerleading for Donald Trump and the Republicans it's rank propaganda and if you don't understand that that's sad <laughs>